starting off our list today at number 10, we have Brad Pitt. It seems like Angelina Jolie is on a mission to ruin Brad Pitt's career, just like Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp. Back in 2022, people obtained a reacted FBI report that Angelina anonymously submitted a Freedom of Information Act request. In the documents, the actress alleged to the authorities that while Brad was under the influence, he was menacing towards her and six of their kids on September 14th, 2016 during a flight from France to Los Angeles. The investigation would then be closed by November of 2022 and no charges were ever pursued but that hasn't stopped Angelina from submitting more claims to the media. A source even close to Brad has claimed that both Brad and Angelina have had the documents in question for years and by Angelina submitting the documents it means that she is trying to revive issues that were solved to hurt Brad's career. With the documents being filed with evidence that wasn't really accurate or proven, Brad has been lucky enough to escape Angelina's hands of destruction for now, but it seems like she doesn't want to give up just yet and we could see her ruin his career very shortly. Number 9, Tyga. At one point, there wasn't a song people didn't know when it came to Tyga's career, but after he and Kylie Jenner split, it seems like a lot of people chose to abandon Tyga altogether, which is pretty sad as he's an amazing artist. It seems like now when his songs do come on, everybody in the room goes, oh my god, I forgot about this song, and it proves after his relationship ended with Kylie, he became pretty irrelevant. Even back in 2017, Kylie reportedly had to ask Kanye West to help Tyga with his stalling career because she saw her ex was struggling after the split and she felt really bad for him. An inside source close to Kylie would then reveal to Hollywood Life that Kylie doesn't want to see her ex fall apart just because they weren't together. Once Kylie realized that Tyga's career was stalling after their breakup, she was a little concerned so she reached out to Kanye to see what they could do to revive Tyga's career. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you know, subscribe to the channel. Number 8, Rupert Saunders. When British director Rupert Saunders was chosen to direct Snow White and the Huntsman for his feature film debut, it seemed like a start of a pretty promising career for Rupert. But just weeks after the film lackluster theatrical debut, he and Kristen Stewart were captured in a compromising position together. While both came out to issue public apologies about the affair, as Kristen cheated on her Twilight co-star Robert Pattinson, Rupert was unfaithful to his wife of 10 years, Liberty Ross. While Kristen's career was able to continue on throughout the scandal, it would take Rupert years to secure a second feature of his directorial gig with his 2017 Ghost in a Shell, which was crushed by critics, by the way. At the time, he was also still imploring the public to forgive and forget, but even when he came out to say, everyone makes mistakes and I am bound to make many more mistakes and I wouldn't expect my life to be exciting if I didn't, people still couldn't forgive and forget and it's caused his art in the directing field to come to a complete halt. Number 7, Chris Humphreys. It seems like if you enter into the Kardashian family in even the smallest of capacities, your reputation is at risk. I mean, just ask Jordan Woods and Scott Disick. But if you need more proof, you can always look at the long list of ex-friends, ex-stylists, ex-boyfriends, and ex-husbands. And this is exactly what happened to NBA star Chris Humphreys, who became a laughing stock of Bo Hollywood in the basketball scene after his highly publicized marriage to Kim Kardashian ended after just 72 days. Just after, in December 2011, Chris would find himself being booed during basketball games and he would be put into a position where he bounced from team to team before landing with the Philadelphia 76ers, but his time with the team wouldn't last long as he would be weighed from their roster in October 2017. And that would be the last time Chris would professionally dribble a basketball on the court. That same year, Kim would then sit down in an interview with Watch What Happens Live where she would admit that she knew while she was on her honeymoon with Chris that their relationship wasn't going to work out. Now it seems like Chris has found a new passion in life as he co-owns several Five Guy Burger shops and is a franchisee of a salad eatery. Number 6, Robin Thicke. After 
Justin Robin Thicke dominated the charts for the entire summer of 2013 with his hit single Blurred Lines. Robin's career essentially died overnight after his wife Paula Patton filed for divorce in October 2014, citing irreconcilable differences as the cause for their split. According to TMZ, Robin tried to win back Paula by releasing his sappy album Paula in 2014, but it was apparently a flop with its namesake and his fans, as the album only sold 530 copies in its debut week in the UK. And from there, things only got worse for Robin, as months after filing to the end of their marriage, Paula not only accused Robin of cheating on her with several different women, but she also accused him of physical and emotional abuse, infidelity, and even said he had an addiction to substances. Then during the couple's bitter custody battle for their son Julian, Paula then asked the court to grant her a temporary restraining order against Robin, which was ultimately granted until the courts ordered them to have shared custody of their son. Number 5. Meg Ryan During Meg Ryan's heyday, she was one of America's most in-demand screen sweethearts. As she went on to nab the romantic lead in a slew of successful pictures, that included Sleepless in Seattle when Harry met Sally and You Got Mail. But just as she was rising to the top to be the girl next door, her image would be shattered after rumors started to claim that she was having an affair with Proof of Life co-star Russell Crowe. The tabloid's frenzied affair was then publicly perceived as the reason for her divorce from her husband of nine years, and what led to the serious decline in her popularity. Later, Meg would deny her fling with Russell for being the reason behind her divorce when she told Harper Bazaar, I definitely have moments of wanting to straighten it all out and tell everyone what really went down but you know, who would I be proving anything to? Though there may be plenty of blame to go around, Meg's affair was the beginning of the end of her career and her household name would be left behind in the 90s. And number 4 we have Ryan Philippe. Ryan Philippe's relationship with Reese Witherspoon was intense when the pair starred as the romantic leads in the 1999 romantic drama Cruel Intentions and attracted a generation of followers deeply invested in the couple's marriage and their two kids. Many Many thought their love would be a happily ever after, but when their union fell apart 8 years later, many fans would be furious after rumors emerged and claimed that Ryan had cheated on Reese. That very same year, Ryan allegedly stepped out with his stop loss co-star, Abby Cornish. Even though Reese and Ryan went on to be successful co-parents for their kids, Ryan's career hasn't quite revived from all the negative press associated with the pair's breakup, and seemingly overnight he lost the Hollywood heartthrob status he once boasted in films such as I Know What You Did Last Summer and Flags of Our Fathers. Since Ryan has grown weary of the public's cruel criticism, he once told Howard Stern in 2010 that he was tired of being blamed and that he didn't feel like he deserved all the scrutiny as things just happen. Number 3 Jude Law Jude Law's affair with his children's nanny became a true celebrity spectacle after the actor's secret in public in 2005. It would eventually cause his team to force him to issue an apology to his then fiance, Sienna Miller, for the affair. In his apology, he would say, I just want to say I'm deeply ashamed and upset I've hurt Sienna and the people close to us. There is no defense for my action, which I sincerely regret. While this wouldn't be the first time he's been accused of infidelity with his partners in the past, the high profile nature of his relationship with Miller caused more damage to Jude's career as before his transgressions, Jude enjoyed an A-list status in leading roles such as Cold Mountain and Closer. But after the affair, it took him many years to recoup his mainstream appeal by the way of Sherlock Holmes. While his career seems to be doing just fine these days, it's probably just because he's been keeping his personal life pretty low key. Number 2. Tiger Woods Few professional golfers have earned the kind of household name status of Tiger Woods and even fewer have watched their reputations fade away way as they sunk into the mud like Tiger did in 2009. After his extramarital affairs were exposed, after Tiger's wife at the time, Ellen Nordedrin, gave birth to the couple's second child, the tabloids would unearth one of Tiger's relationships with another woman. After Tiger lost his family friendly face, he would lose millions in endorsement deals and he was even to blame for billions of shareholder losses. Even his golf game suffered as a result of his personal drama 
Back in 2013, Woods would briefly recover his career, but his personal activities tarnished his image again after new allegations surfaced and claimed he cheated on beloved Olympic skier Lindsey Vaughn. And while most of the public has forgotten about Tiger's past transgressions, it seems like his reputation may still be holding him back from success. And coming in number one today, we have Ned Fulmer. So ex Buzzfeed employee Ned Fulmer is known because of his role with the popular YouTube channel The Try Guys, as he helped them grow an audience to tune a millions on Buzzfeed's publication platform before he and his colleagues decided to go independent. In addition to the cheating entertaining content with his colleagues, Ned went on to brand himself as the ultimate family guy just after he and his wife Ariel marked their 5th anniversary in 2017. He shared that he had no doubt about picking her as his partner as it was love at first sight. However, in September 2022, Ned would prove otherwise as just over 10 years after the couple tied the knot, the house that Ned built came tumbling down as it would be exposed that Ned had cheated on his wife with a member of the staff. The cheating allegation was then later confirmed by Ned himself when he put out an Instagram statement saying, Family should have always been my priority, but I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship. The Try Guys then went on to remove Ned from the platform and later announced that Ned wouldn't be making any appearances on the pre recorded material going forward. Number 10, Liza Koshi and David Dobrik. I remember the cultural reset this announcement caused. I mean, at first, I thought it was a joke. There was no way that these two would ever break up. Well, you know, it, it wasn't a joke. And thank goodness, because after their breakup, Liza's career skyrocketed and David's. Well, you know David. The two started dating in 2015 on the rise of both of their YouTube fame. David and his vlog squad and Liza with the colorful array of characters she manufactured herself. They would frequently appear in each other's videos and were definitely one of the happiest seeming couples. Everything was perfect until it wasn't. In 2018, the infamous breakup video dropped. The pair said that their breakup was amicable and that they had decided a couple months prior that they would simply be better off as platonic friends. Number 9. Brad Pitt and Angelina Joe Lee. This star powered pair first met in 2004 while filming their movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith, while Brad was married to Jennifer Aniston. Rumors of a relationship began to circle on set, and shortly after the movie, Pitt and Aniston announced their separation after five years of marriage. By July of 2005, the pair was spotted together and confirmed their relationship. Ten years after meeting, the two got married in 2014. However, you could call their wedding the calm before the storm. Jolie filed for divorce from Pitt in 20 2016, citing irreconcilable differences and providing no comments to news outlets or prying eyes, which she did for the privacy of her family. She's an amazing mother and a fantastic woman. Icon for life, honestly. <laughs> Number 8. Nina Dobrev and Ian Summerhalder Ian Summerhalder and Nina Dobrev shared the screen for six seasons as Damon Salvatore and Elena Gilbert on The Vampire Diaries. Interestingly, their on-screen chemistry extended to real life as they became romantically involved from 2010 to 2013, despite Dobrev's initial intention to maintain a strictly professional approach on set. In an interview with Seventeen in October 2012, Dobrev confessed that she resisted the idea of Damon a co-star, but acknowledged that sometimes connections were inevitable. Throughout their relationship, the couple kept a relatively low profile, occasionally giving glimpses of their romance during trips and music festivals. Despite parting ways in 2013, they managed to sustain both a professional and personal connection after the breakup. Number 7. Tim Burton and Helena Bonham Carter Tim Burton and Helena Bonham Carter shared a unique and definitely eccentric partnership, both in their professional and romantic lives. Their collaboration began on the set of Planet of the Apes in 2001 and extended to eight films, including some of my favorite movies like Corpse Bride and Todd. Despite their long collaboration and personal connection, the couple chose not to marry, opting for a distinctive living arrangement in London's Belsize Park. They maintained separate houses, joined by a hallway, with Bonham Carter revealing in 2010 that the decision was due to the small size of her home. She explained that the arrangement of separate living allowed them to balance together togetherness with personal space, jokingly adding that Burton's snoring was a noteworthy aspect of their unconventional housing situation. While their professional collaboration was incredible and extremely successful, I mean, Bonham Carter still acknowledged that it wasn't always smooth sailing. In an interview, she admitted that her working relationship had its challenges, particularly during the filming of Sweeney Todd, where the two were known to often argue. The couple, parents to two, eventually separated in 2014 
2019, ending their extraordinary cinematic and personal journey together. Number 6. Scarlett Johansson and Ryan Reynolds Ryan Reynolds and Scarlett Johansson, an iconic couple from 2008 to 2011, shared a very high profile marriage before parting ways. In a candid interview with Time Out New York in December 2009, Johansson disclosed the challenges of balancing their hectic schedules. She emphasized the difficulties in their respective profession and the struggle to allocate time for family amidst their demanding careers. This revelation must have marked a turning point as the couple officially announced their separation in 2010, finalizing their divorce in July of 2011. While the end of their marriage was undoubtedly a significant chapter, it paved the way for personal and professional growth for both of them. Post divorce, Ryan Reynolds found love anew, tying the knot with Blake Lively in 2012, and thank goodness because they are my, oh, they're my favorite celebrity couple. They are so funny and their tweets are so, oh, I love them, I love them. They make me believe in love. Is that, wait, is that sad? I don't, I don't know. I have divorced parents, whatever. Anyway, Scarlett Johansson entered a new chapter by marrying Saturday Night Live head writer Colin Jost in 2020. It was a happy ending for everyone. Number five, Lisa Bonet and Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet, once the epitome of a relaxed and harmonious couple, revealed their separation in 2022, marking the end of their nearly 17 year long relationship. The couple, known for prioritizing their blended family, included Bonet's ex husband, Lenny Kravitz, and daughter, Zoe Kravitz, along with their shared children, Lola and Nicoa Wolf. Momoa had long harbored admiration for Bonet, dating back to his childhood when he first saw her on The Cosby Show. Their paths crossed in 2005 at a jazz club, and the pair welcomed their first child together two years later. Despite keeping their marriage under wraps until 2017, the couple stunned fans by announcing their separation after nearly five years of marriage in January 2022. Insiders revealed that the decision to part ways was not abrupt, emphasizing that the couple had been amazing for years until they no longer were. Number four, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner. After a four year marriage and the birth of two children, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner decided to end their relationship. The formalities of their separation were set in motion when Jonas filed for a disillusion of marriage from Turner on September 5th, 2023, citing irreparable breakdown as the grounds for their parting ways. Addressing the end of their union, the couple took to Instagram the next day to reveal that the decision was a mutual one. Their romantic relationship began in 2016 when Sophie and Jonas connected through Instagram DMs. Despite initial reservations on Turner's part, an evening at a British pub brought them closer, leading to Jonas proposing a year later. In 2019, the couple celebrated their commitment with two ceremonies, a surprise event in Las Vegas and a grand affair in the French countryside. Turner once expressed that marriage had only strengthened their bond, providing a profound sense of security. The couple's family grew with the arrival of daughters Willa in 2020 and Delphine in 2022. Despite the joys and public declarations of love, the journey has reached its end and custody battles have ensued and it doesn't really seem like they're all too happy with each other anymore. Number three, Amy Poehler and Will Arnett. The paths of actors Amy Poehler and Will Arnett first crossed in the 1990s when Arnett witnessed a performance by Poehler's improv group in New York City, which just, wow, what a sentence. Although Arnett was smitten by Poehler, the two didn't embark on a romantic journey until friends reintroduced them to each other in 2000. Their professional lives became intertwined as they collaborated on various projects, ranging from portraying unconventional siblings in Blades of Glory to making guest appearances on each other's TV shows, Polar on Parks and Recreation, and Arnett on Arrested Development, which, I mean, both hilarious. Those are two of my favorite shows, especially Arrested Development, because Will Arnett's character, Joe, fantastic, fantastic. In 2003, the couple exchanged vows, marking Polar's inaugural marriage and Arnett's second after a brief stint with Penelope Ann Miller. The union blossomed into a family with the arrival of their two sons, Archie and Abel. Despite parting ways in 2012, Polar and Arnett remained dedicated co-parents.
parents. Retaining an amicable relationship. God, they, they must have been so funny together. What I would do to have been to a dinner party. That is, oh, be so good. Okay. Number two, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. This amazing pair initially crossed paths as co-stars in The Amazing Spider-Man, where they co-starred as Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, where they experienced a real-life romance mirroring their on-screen connection. Over a span of four years, they navigated their relationship through the filming of another Spider-Man installment and embarked on a global journey together for press. Despite their eventual breakup and subsequent individual pursuits, with Stone now happily married with a child and Garfield romantically linked to model Alyssa Miller, the bond they share endures. Retaining a genuine friendship, the two openly express their continued affection and admiration for one another. In a 2016 interview with Vogue, Stone conveyed that Garfield remains someone I still love very much. Garfield reciprocated the sentiment the following year in Vanity Fair, emphasizing the abundance of love and respect between them, asserting himself as her biggest fan as an artist. Oh, and his shot of espresso speech could bring me to tears. I would, I would fold immediately if anyone ever spoke to me that way, or of me, I guess. <laughs> Number one, Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez. In October 2023, the divorce of Dalton and Ari was finalized, which followed their publicized separation in July of last year. Oh my God, and it's last year now, that's insane. Grande and Gomez's relationship began during 2020 as they spent a considerable amount of time together, nurturing their connection. Despite the challenges posed by the global state at this time, Gomez proposed to Grande in December of 2020. On May 17th, 2021, it was confirmed that Grande and Gomez had secretly exchanged vows in their California home. Unfortunately, their union came to an end shortly after their two-year anniversary mark. By July 20th, 2023, reports emerged that Grande had entered a new romantic chapter with her Wicked co-star, in Slater. Sources disclosed that Grande and Slater began dating after her separation from Dalton in January. The relationship was described as recent, marked by fun and enjoyment of each other's company, although there was no official confirmation or announcement of a separation or divorce involving Slater and his wife beyond people's initial report. We should have known that Miley and Liam wouldn't last. Miley has always been a firecracker of a woman, and Liam has always felt more like chill. They were a really cute couple though. They starred in the film The Last Song together in 2009, that's also how they met. They dated for a bit in 2009, then broke up in 2010, then got back together later in the year, then break up, just as usual like an on again, off again kind of deal. They did get engaged in 2012, but it wasn't exactly smooth sailing. There were lots of rumors that the pair had broken up, the wedding got postponed, until eventually the whole thing was called off. In this break is when Miley tweeted the famous, I want to see the new Hunger Games, but that means I'll have to look at my ex for two hours tweet. I love this tweet. This is referencing Liam's role as Gale in the Hunger Games trilogy. The pair eventually got back together in 2016 and got engaged again, and then finally in 2018 are married. Even this new chapter of this relationship had some signs. There was that video from the Avengers Endgame red carpet where Liam said something to Miley that caused, caused her to push him off. Many people think he said something like, could you behave for once? The the pair divorced a few months after this carpet. Without Miley Cyrus dating Liam Hemsworth, we never would have gotten the banger flowers and Miley never would have received her first Grammy, so it all worked out in the end. Technically, Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy never confirmed they dated, but they were seen out together a lot, a lot, a lot. And Taylor's relationship announcements have never been a big, hello world, we are dating. It's always been more speculation until it's a couple months in, then she'll give hints and do public displays. Maddie and Taylor were only seen around each other for about a month to maybe two months. Before this, the pair were just friends, we know that for sure. People thought the pair were dating because they were spotted out at a bunch of restaurants, Taylor randomly performed at a 1975 concert, and Maddie was spotted at the Eras tour a few nights. This is also similar to what happened with Travis Kelsey and Joe Alwyn, minus the surprise performance of course, so that's why everyone was looking at this pair extra close. The thing is, Maddie Healy has an onstage persona that is controversial to say the least. He famously did the Yahtzee with an N salute on stage. It was supposed to be satire, apparently. He also made some racially insensitive remarks about Ice Spice, who was friends with Taylor and collaborated with her on Karma. Taylor and Maddie were rumored to be dating way back in 2014, around Taylor's 1989 era. It also produced a quote from Maddie
party that came back to haunt him, he said it would be emasculating to date Taylor. Taylor's fans were not the happiest about this particular relationship, and because of this, Taylor and Maddie stopped appearing in public together pretty quick. We still don't know if they were actually dating or not. I guess we'll never know. Billie Eilish and Jesse Rutherford started dating in 2022, first seen together in a romantic setting on October 13th. People were quick to comment on their age gap and also Billie's young age in general. They have a 10 year age gap and Billie was about 20 or 21 when they started dating, but they had known each other since she was 15 years old at least. Lots of people saw that as a little weird. Their Halloween costume from 2022 had people talking. All the comments people made about their age gap, they seemed to use as inspiration, with Billie going as a baby and Jesse as an old man. Many people thought it was a weird choice. So there's a lot of criticism towards this couple from the outside, but there were also signs from the inside too. On her 2021 album, Happier Than Ever, Billie has a track called Your Power. It is about people taking advantage of younger people in relationships and those with power over someone else using it to their advantage to hurt the other person in some way. Of course, this is just what fans have gathered from the lyrics. The song features lyrics like, she was sleeping in your clothes, but now she's got to get to class, and you swear you didn't know, you said you thought she was your age. The song was released about a year before Jesse came into the picture, and many people expressed that fact, wondering why Billy got into a relationship with such a big age gap when she's seemingly written that she wasn't fond of them. The pair were only together for about 8 months, but are on good terms, as confirmed by Billy on her Instagram story. Like Billy and Jesse, Olivia Rodrigo was also in a relationship that had people looking twice at the age gap. This one wasn't as bad, I guess, but it still was amazing by any means. She was 18 when they started dating and he was 24, so only 6 years. While that's not as big of a gap as we've seen elsewhere, it's not small either. And many Olivia fans were concerned as the pair were first spotted out together in June and Olivia had just turned 18 a few months ago. It was all around just a situation that rubbed people the wrong way. So again, this couple has a lot of outside pressure and criticism against them, plus Olivia Rodrigo is a major Taylor Swift fan, that is no secret. Taylor famously dated, then allegedly wrote her album Speak Now about John Mayer. That relationship was also one with a big age gap with the girl being very young. Maybe Olivia heard Taylor's warnings in the songs. The two leading stars of the Disney Channel original film High School Musical, Vanessa Hudgens and Zac Efron famously dated. This was the Brangelina of my childhood. I remember learning about what actors were and then learning that not only was my favorite couple dating in the movie but also in real life. They were like the royal family to me. Still, they were so young when they met and started dating, plus they weren't your regular small town high school sweethearts. They lived in Hollywood. They were making movies. Being that young and probably having to spend so much time apart would put a strain on any relationship. Zach and Vanessa were together about 5 years before calling it quits. E! News had some inside sources confirm the breakup wasn't dramatic like the scenes from the movies, nothing like gotta go my own way from High School Musical 2. The insider also noted that they were together for so long it just ran its course. Disney has a track record of encouraging the stars of their various shows and movies to date. It happened with Dove Cameron and her ex Ryan McCartan, Joe Jonas and Demi Lovato. Zach and Vanessa were both 18 while filming High School Musical and there was all this outside pressure and even proposal rumors that would be enough to put a lot of strain on the relationship. Luckily, it looks like the pair are still on good terms. Vanessa just announced her pregnancy in the Oscars red carpet, then later posted about it on Instagram. Zach commented, she's killing it. I couldn't be happier for V. Zanessa, you will always be famous. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling worked together on the iconic film The Notebook and soon brought that chemistry from the silver screen to real life. They dated from 2005 to 2007, but from the beginning, their relationship was rocky. Every fan of The Notebook probably remembers the moment they found out that Rachel and Ryan hated each other at the start of filming that movie. Ryan apparently tried to get Rachel fired and even requested that for one scene, Rachel was taken off set and a different different actress gets brought in to read her lines. It was serious, okay? Even the director has confirmed that the two did not get along. Movie budgets and timelines are tight though, so there needed to be a fix made here. So apparently, Ryan, Rachel, a producer, and the director went in a room together. Ryan and Rachel screamed it out, and then they were fine. Eventually more than fine, they started dating in 2005, a year after the film came out. They had some pretty iconic moments, for example, when they recreated their iconic notebook kiss after 
after winning Best Kiss at the MTV Movie and TV Awards. Unfortunately, in 2007, the relationship ended apparently pretty similar to how it started. Ryan said in an interview that the only thing I remember is we both went down swinging and we called it a draw. Adding in a later interview that show business is the bad guy. When both people are in show business, it's too much show business. It takes all of the light so nothing else can grow. That's fair, we should have known that their relationship would go out blazing if that's how it started. Another iconic couple born from iconic roles in an iconic franchise. We are talking about Christian Stewart and Robert Pattinson, Twilight's Bella and Edward. The pair first met in 2007 but didn't officially start dating until 2009, we think. They kissed in 2009. A producer for Twilight did an interview with Time in 2010 in which he said that he hopes the pair stay together through filming the remainder of the movies to more left, and that's a lot of pressure to put on a relationship. It would suck if you thought a relationship had run its course, but you felt you had to stay together to not mess up a big movie franchise. There was some infidelity on Christian's part that a former president actually weighed in on. Sure enough, the pair did stay together until just after the last Twilight film came out. Years later, Christian did say in an interview that she felt her relationship with Robert had been made into a product, so it really shouldn't have come as a surprise that as soon as the franchise franchise was done, the two called it quits. They are both so okay now. Kristen is bi and engaged to a screenwriter Dylan Mayer, no relation to Stephanie Mayer, author of Twilight. I did look it up because it was like there's no way. Robert is also engaged to a woman, the actress and singer Suki Waterhouse. They are expecting a child together. Jelena, the it couple of the 2010s, Selena Gomez was a Disney star and starting up her music career, and Justin Bieber was one of the biggest teen heartthrobs of the era. They dated or were kind of dating for eight years before shocking the world when they broke up in 2018. But there were signs, probably the most neon flashing light sign, was that they were so on and off. In the last about four years of their relationship, they were taking a lot of breaks. Justin briefly dated now wife Haley Baldwin during one of those splits. This is kind of like Zach and Vanessa, they were both so young and they had so much pressure on them from the outside. I also remember lots of people were caught up with their age gap. Their age gap was only two years. He was 16 when they met and she was 18. It really wasn't that bad. Their love story was an exciting one to follow. Justin literally rented out an entire stadium so the two could watch a movie together. The pair were seen on what is thought to be their first date in 2010. Things went relatively smoothly until 2014. This is the year Justin was arrested and Selena checked into rehab for lupus. They were split up by this point. Justin dates a bunch of models, Selena some other music artists, but then they get seen together again and are apparently back together in 2017. But by 2018, they are really over because Justin gets married. Although Justin apparently, allegedly, called Selena before the wedding 23 times. Obviously, we don't have the tapes to really prove it, but Selena hinted at the then rumor in her song Ring. So it's up to you what you want to think. Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande had a whirlwind of a romance back in 2018. The pair only dated for about six months and almost got married, but it didn't start on the most solid foundation, so it's no wonder they didn't. Last. Pete had been in a relationship with fellow comedian and writer Cassie David before dating Ariana, like a day before Pete first stepped out with Ariana. Pete and Cassie had decided to take a break for about two weeks. Cassie called Pete after the first couple days though, saying she wanted to work things out, but he wanted to continue the break. He broke up with her over text two days later, then a day after Pete and Ariana were out together. It was a messy timeline, that's for sure, and it did not make Ariana and Pete look too good. Pete and Ariana ended up calling it quits because Ariana wasn't taking the passing of Mac Miller so well, so there wasn't any bad blood in the initial breakup. That came after. Ariana said in Vogue that she considered Pete to be a distraction, and Pete responded equally as publicly in his Netflix comedy special. The entire relationship moved pretty quick. The pair moved in together a month-ish after beginning to date, with the engagement happening around the same time. They just also happened to move quickly into the breakup phase too. Kim and Kanye used to be the top Hollywood couple. Whether you like them or not, you couldn't deny their star power. No marriage is perfect, of course, but they seem to be doing pretty good. Good. So their split came as a bit of a surprise when it was announced in 2021 that the couple was getting divorced. The show Keeping Up with the Kardashians shed some light on why exactly the couple split up, and they make sense. I'm surprised that we, the public, didn't see this coming. Kim shared with her sisters that she does think Kanye is an amazing dad, but he moves around so much and she can't keep up with that side of him, so she needs to stay where she is. There was also the harsh and aggressive tweets Kanye directed towards Kim's mom, Kris Jenner. Kanye 
Kanye has always been known to act a bit unhinged. There was the Taylor Swift mic incident at the VMAs that he said God told him to do, manipulating that infamous phone conversation with Taylor Swift, seemingly supportive tweets toward a convicted SA perpetrator, portraying various celebrities nude, some without their consent, and sharing his controversial opinions on the experience of black people in America. There were just a lot of things that make you go, okay Kim, I get it. Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Kanye West. After losing his billionaire status due to brand endorsement deals cancelling their partnership with Kanye, after he started to spread hate speech across the internet, Kanye would soon be left with only $400 million to his name which is a far cry from the $1.8 billion he used to be worth in the first half of 2022. To make matters even worse, after his divorce was finalized, he would then be ordered to pay Kim Kardashian another $2.4 million per year, which equals out to be $200,000 a month for child support. He also needs to split the cost of healthcare, security, and educational expenses with his ex-wife in the process. But the money altogether is just really strange as Kim is already worth $1.7 billion. Not only would Kanye lose a large sum of his money, but he would also lose his $60 million home that he shared with Kim during their settlement altogether after 6 years being married to Kanye. He would ultimately end up losing $2.7 one billion dollars in assets that he shared with his ex-wife, which included a mansion in California, in Calabasas, a Miami condo, and two ranches in Wyoming. Art, vehicles, jewelry, and livestock. Number nine, Amber Heard. When Amber Heard filed for divorce from Johnny Depp in 2016 after being married to the actor for 15 months, she would later be awarded seven million dollars in the divorce settlement, which she said was which she said she would be donating to charity. But the process wasn't as clean cut, as the pair's court battles quickly turned ugly as Amber started to spread lies to ruin Johnny's career. The former couple then went on to spend most of 2020 and 2021 in court for a libel case against UK's The Sun. After Depp lost the suit in appeal, in 2022 the pair would then return to court for a defamation trial Johnny brought against Amber over a 2018 article she penned for the Washington Post. When the court proceedings for the case kicked off on April 11th, 2022, both actors made bombshell allegations of physical, emotional, and mental abuse against each other. On June 1st, seven person jury then reached a verdict and decided that Johnny proved his ex-wife defamed him. The jury then awarded Johnny with another $15 million in damages. Though Amber would only have to pay $10 million due to Virginia law cap on punitive damages. She would win one of three defamation counts and she was awarded $2 million in damages. Both parties appealed but back in December, Amber announced she settled with her ex and he donated the $1 million he received from her to charity. After all the expense, Amber is now worth negative six million dollars. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? So don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you know, subscribe to the channel. Number eight, Wiz Khalifa. While it's honestly pretty easy to look at numbers that were involved in Wiz Khalifa and Amber Rose's divorce, the numbers alone will make you wince. Thank God the couple had a prenup. Then Wiz Khalifa would have lost more than he was set to lose during their divorce. As per their prenup, Wiz Khalifa would be forced to fork out $1 million to pay Amber Rose, and he would be forced to pay Amber child support payments of $14,800. TMZ would then later report that Wiz was able to keep most of his assets, which included their shared home and 10 of their cars. It's also worth noting that there wasn't any hard feelings between the pair, as after their divorce, they were both seen celebrating together in an X rated club for one final hurrah. Number seven, Steven Spielberg. Just because Steven Spielberg was the greatest director alive, it didn't mean that he was immune to problems with his love life. At the height of his career in 1985, Stephen probably made the biggest mistake of his life when he didn't make Amy Irving sign proper prenup, sign a proper prenup before marrying the actress. Amy being known best for her role in Carrie was considered to be one of the best actors of her generation. Even before the pair got married, they had a pretty rocky relationship. And at one point, they had this pretty messy breakup that even caused Amy to lose out on a major role in Indiana Jones. The two finally did reconnect and got married in 1985, but by the time they filed for divorce and finalized everything, Stephen would be ordered to pay Amy a large sum of $100 million. As at this time, the judge saw it fit because the popular director was worth over a billion dollars. So you're probably wondering how the actress was able to obtain so much money. Well, Stephen, because when Stephen wrote the prenup, he did it on a 
napkin and the judge ruled out that the napkin document wasn't legally valid. Number 6. Janet Jackson So we clearly live in a society that favours men. But if you really think about it, when we think of men in a divorce we usually think that they're the ones that have to pay big when it comes to expenses. But apparently gender knows no bounds when it comes to money and fame. As some of the biggest female stars have lost millions of dollars during their split with their partner. When Janet Jackson secretly got married to songwriter Renee Elzondo in 1991, it was kind of a really big shock for everyone when he filed for a divorce in 1999. While many suspected that the pair had gotten married at some point, no one realized it was for that long and that it could fall apart also behind closed doors, especially since he was always around, with Renee producing some of her biggest hits, directing some of her music videos, and even using his hand to cover Janet on her infamous Rolling Stone cover shot, no one would know that later Janet would lose millions after the divorce was finalized. Renee filed to question its validity and ended up walking away from the marriage with a whopping sum of $10 million. Number 5. Scott Disick Back in 2022, tensions between Scott Disick and the Kardashian-Jenner family would be at an all time high after Scott took it upon himself to discuss the current situation going on with him and Courtney. And his expression would also linger over how he felt about his family as a whole. The whole situation would come after Scott was left fuming because the family chose to leave him out of family events, something they've never chosen to do before. On an episode of the Kardashians, fans would see Scott letting all of his feelings loose by telling the entire Kardashian family how he really feels about being left out of the family events. When Chris invited Scott to a diner for brunch, she would tell him that they were celebrating her birthday there because she was trying to spare Scott's feelings, because she was actually having a bigger party at her new home and didn't invite him. While Chris was lying to Scott, he quickly caught on that Chris was being untruthful with him. It would then quickly come out that she was having a party and didn't want to invite Scott because Courtney and Travis would be there. Scott would then be very emotional because he felt like Chris was no longer treating him like family because he was no longer with Courtney. To make matters even worse, Kendall left him out of her birthday festivities and Scott having no family, he would be left feeling heartbroken that his only family has completely abandoned him. I'm mostly disappointed in Chloe in this situation as she's had such a close relationship with Scott and it's to the point that she just threw him to the side like he was nothing. Number 4. Harrison Ford Once upon a time, Harrison Ford was married to Melissa Matheson, and they were the poster child of what people used to use as proof to explain that Hollywood stars could stick it out and make a long and happy marriage work. But unfortunately, all things good come to an end. After 21 years of marriage, when the two shocked the world and filed for divorce, Melissa would then walk away with not only just $85 million, but she would also walk away with a percentage of all future royalty earnings from films made during their marriage. This included his earnings that he made in the Indiana Jones franchise. The pair had met in 1979 on the set of Apocalypse Now. Melissa was working on a script and he had a small role. But it's surprising that Melissa was able to walk away with so much money. She was pretty successful on her own as she was famous for writing E.T. for Steven Spielberg. While we all thought the couple were in love, we all failed to realize that things took a rocky turn for the couple in the last years of their relationship with the trial separation and a lot of late night bar hopping for Harrison Ford. Number 3. Madonna It's not like Madonna's ex-husband Guy Ritchie wasn't successful as he's the man responsible for Sherlock Holmes and Snatch. However, he just wasn't as successful as Madonna so he took everything he could get. When the pair first headed towards divorce court, it wasn't really a big surprise that he would ask to receive a pretty huge sum of money because the guy was pretty much a gold digger from the start. Also, the pair did have a pretty rocky 7 year marriage. At one point during the time together, Madonna even pointed out that she was feeling incarcerated by Richie, as she felt like Richie was really interfering with her potential as an artist and it was one of the reasons behind why she felt like the marriage had to go down. In the process, if Madonna knew how much her freedom would cost, she probably wouldn't have gotten married to Richie as near the end she reportedly had to pay him $85 million in a divorce settlement. But honestly, if you have to take someone for that much money, it really says a lot about you, especially if you're a man taking that much 
huge money from a hardworking woman. Number two, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's no big surprise that Maria Shriver would file for divorce from Arnold Schwarzenegger after she found out not only was he having an affair, but he was also having an affair with the help and he even had a child with her. Among one of the most trickiest separations Hollywood has ever seen, four years after Maria filed for divorce, they would still be officially married as sources would claim Arnold just kept delaying the inedible. Maybe he knew that there was no way he was walking away from this divorce without paying big, and really, he would be right, since the pair did not have a prenup according to California law, which meant that Maria was entitled to half of his fortune. Feeling bad about the whole thing and how it ended, Arnold then threw in some extra cash as a good gesture. The exact number was never officially released, but estimates put Arnold's fortune around 500 million to 750 million, which means Maria likely got a huge settlement around 250 to 375 million dollars. And coming in number one today, we have Michael Jordan. When Michael Jordan got divorced to his first wife, Juanita Benoit, he paid one of the largest amounts we've seen someone ever pay in a divorce settlement. Shortly after the pair got married in 1989, they signed a postnuptial agreement that would grant Juanita half of Jordan's fortune in a divorce. That means when the couple decided to go their separate ways in 2006, Juanita ended up receiving a whopping amount of 168 million. She also got their Chicago mansion, custody of their kids. However, after that many years, there's clearly a lot of respect between the two and they had no hard feelings. As when their divorce ended, it was clean and fair and none of them aired out their dirty laundry to the press or public. Number 10, Pete Davidson and Cassie David. Cassie David highlighted her experience dating Pete Davidson in the book, No One Asked For This. In the book, Cassie explained she met Pete when her dad, Larry David, hosted an episode on Saturday Night Live back in 2016. The two then started dating soon after. Pete would get a cartoon portrait of Cassie tattooed on his arm and a tattoo of her name on his ring finger followed by her favorite emoji. In the book, Cassie claimed she was fearful to end things with Pete due to his sensitive state of his mental health, but decided they needed an initial breakup because she was unable to convince him that she loved him. A few days later, she would call him back and say she made a mistake, but Pete said he was the happiest he's ever been, and then would dump her for good two days later in a text message so he could get with Ariana Grande. I mean, it is Ariana Grande, so I don't blame him. However, at least give the person a benefit of the doubt and do it in person. At number nine, we have Katy Perry and Russell Brand. In Katy Perry's heartfelt documentary, Pardon Me, the singer admitted that the couple's hectic work schedules and her not being ready for children led to the failure of the couple's marriage. Who can forget when watching the documentary, Katy got a text message from Russell before going on stage for her California Dream Tour. The scene viewers would watch would be devastating as they watched their favorite pop icon break down in front of the camera. Although Russell decided to take nothing from her during the divorce, he would leave her with a broken heart, and then she would later write about it in her song, Wide Awake. Russell Lynn later said Katie being on tour made his heart grow colder, and he also came to the realization he didn't want to be part of the lavish lifestyle anymore. Number eight, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Now, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's breakup has been one of the messiest breakups Hollywood has ever seen, mainly because they're split back in 2016, and the drama is still going on. Now, with Brad Pitt recently opening Opening up about his life after the messy split from Angelina, it makes you question what kind of person is Angelina Jolie really? Angelina would file for divorce from Brad Pitt following a heated altercation during a private plane ride. The flight would lead her to accuse Brad of a and during this time period, he would spend time at the studio to work on his art skills. Now his artwork has allowed him to focus on his life and where it's all gone wrong with his relationship. It also allowed the actor to realize which friendships made him feel safe. Now Angelina and Brad are currently involved in a court battle in which Angelina has brought up some serious accusations against Brad. Despite the two finalizing their divorce back in 2019, the two remain in a custody battle over their French winery. And number seven, we have Iggy and Nick Young. After Iggy split from NBA player Nick Young, the star would come out to say that she broke up with Nick when she found out he had brought another woman into their home while she was away. Let's just say Nick thought Iggy wouldn't be watching the security footage, but she did, and he was caught. It was later reviewed that Nick also cheated on Iggy with the mother of his child, and that mother would soon be expecting her second child with Nick's kid. He definitely did her dirty on that one. Iggy then took to Twitter to 
to say, it's never easy to part ways with the person you planned your entire future with. Later, a video would be leaked by Nick's teammate that would highlight Nick bragging about cheating on Iggy with other women. And number six, we have JLo and A-Rod. Now, remember that time when JLo was going to settle down with A-Rod and then it never happened? Shortly after JLo ended her engagement to A-Rod, Jennifer found herself back in the arms of Ben Affleck. Now, this would come 17 years after Ben and her called off their initial engagement so he could get with Jennifer Garner. Ben and Jennifer would pack on the PDA all around the world and they were planning it for the long haul this time. Jennifer would then later say, A-Rod can't take a hit. An insider would then say she gets how Alex feels after they spent five years together and that they had plans to marry and everyone was rooting for them but at the end, it was done. All Jayla wanted for him was to move on and she wished him the best. At number five, we have Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez. Now, the breakup between Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber was extremely awkward for the teens because for the longest time, they couldn't seem to quit each other. The pair both started dating on and off from the year 2010 to 2015. They were also seen hanging out just before he got engaged to Haley Baldwin, which caused a lot of speculation that Haley stole Justin from Selena. Now, Haley did come clean in the Call Her Daddy podcast recently to say none of those rumors were true and that she and Selena were on good terms. The model and singer were also just captured in a photo together at a gala, which shows the two are on good terms with one another. And number four, we have Jason Sudeikis and Olivia Wilde. So Jason and Olivia's breakup has been on every tabloid headline for the last couple of weeks. On November 13th, 2020, news would break that Olivia and Jason had decided to part ways. However, an inside source would then reveal the couple had actually split beforehand. Now, Jason has come out to say Olivia left him for her new boyfriend, Harry Styles. However, Olivia has stated that the two split long before she got with her new boyfriend and it's simply because they fell out of love and she didn't see a path moving forward with Jason any longer. Now, with the nanny coming out with some allegations and Olivia getting served while on set, this breakup has seemed to gotten really messy and it will probably continue as the couple dispute over the custody of their two children. At number three, we have Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes used to be the ultimate power couple. However, due Due to Tom's religious beliefs, their relationship would dissolve in a blink of an eye. Now, Cruz has been involved with Scientology for quite some time now, and in 2012, Katie had to use a calculated plan to escape her marriage from Tom Cruise. She even planned to gain full custody of her child. Katie had to do this in order to escape the Church of Scientology's control. Katie then would be granted full custody of her child, and the court would then state her child had to have no connections with the Church of Scientology. So it makes you wonder what goes on in the the Church of Scientology that made Katie want to run and protect her daughter from it. Number two, we have Miley Cyrus and Liam Hensworth. After a long time on and off, the couple announced their split in 2019. Things got a little messy between the two as Miley quickly moved on with MTV reality star, Caitlin Carter. Miley was out having fun with her new girlfriend while Liam was left feeling heartbroken. When photos of Caitlin and Miley started to surface, Liam completely hit the roof and it would be the last straw for the couple's relationship. After finding out Miley's relationship with Caitlyn, Liam would soon shortly file for a divorce, and shortly after, Miley would then split from Caitlyn and move on with songwriter Cody Simpson. However, those two split back in 2020. It seems like Miley wasn't ready to settle down at the time, and hopefully soon the artist can find someone she truly loves. At number one, we have Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Kim filed for divorce in February of 2021, almost seven years after being married to Kanye. Ye hasn't taken it well at all. Ultimately, the divorce led to Kanye's downward spiral. And due to recent events, you can tell his overall mental state has been extremely effective. When news first broke of Kim getting with the comedian Pete Davidson, Kanye lost his cool and began harassing the two stars to the point it drove a wedge between Pete and Kim and they had to end their relationship. Kanye has even gone as far to say that Kim won't let him see the kids and he's even been banned from going to the family events. But I mean, with all the actions he's been doing lately, I don't blame Kim or her family from wanting to hide their kids from witnessing what's truly going on with Kanye. In at number 10, Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick. Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick first got together in 2006, and we saw their love blossom on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. But even though things started off strong, they quickly went downhill after the show showcased numerous cheating rumors and nights out at the club without Kourtney. It was clear that Scott was the black sheep of the family, and the entire family wanted Kourtney to leave him. Instead, she got pregnant, and throughout their on and off again relationship, they had three kids together. The first breakup happened in 2009 amid cheating rumors, but they got back together when Kourtney learned she was pregnant. They broke up again 
again in 2010, but were back together by 2012 and had a daughter, Penelope. They had son Rain in 2014, and since then they've mostly been off. Even though they don't have a romantic relationship, they have a close friendship and tight co-parenting relationship. Scott is also a mainstay on their show, and fans constantly want this couple back together. However, that's most likely never going to happen now that Courtney is engaged to Travis Barker. But I'm sure Scott is still holding out hope that that relationship will fail. In at number 9, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West I really thought these two were soulmates that would stand the test of time. But sadly, they did not, and they are now in one of the messiest divorces we've seen. After a whirlwind moment in 2012 that ended with an announcement of Kim's pregnancy with their first child, Northwest, that December, Kim and Kanye were engaged in October 2013 and married in the spring of 2014. In this time, the couple had four children, bought a massive house, and considerably increased their fortunes. But that all came to an end in 2021 when Kim officially announced that she was divorcing Kanye. This did not come a shock to fans because Kanye had been ranting on Twitter about his wife and sharing private details with the world on a whim. Now that Kim is publicly dating a new man, Pete Davidson, things have gotten much worse and Kanye is constantly attacking Kim. If these two got together, I seriously do not think anyone would believe it. And at number 8, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie I'm sure we all know about this utter disaster. When they first met, Pitt was married to fellow A-lister Jen Aniston, and they seemed to have the perfect marriage. But then the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith happened, and Brad and Angelina caught feelings for one another. It's not clear if they had a physical affair or just an emotional one, but shortly after, Brad left Jen and moved on with Angelina almost immediately, making it clear that she was the reason their otherwise perfect relationship ended. Brad and Angelina were together from 2005 to 2016, having six kids along the way. They are now divorced and seem to be on very bad terms, so it would be a huge shock if these two reconciled. In at number 7, Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan this is another couple that fell in love on set. Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan seem meant to be together after meeting on the set of Step Up in 2006. They married in 2009 and had a happy nine years together until it suddenly ended in 2018. In their breakup announcement, the pair seemed on the same page, but fans were devastated. The long statement said in part, quote, absolutely nothing has changed about how much we love one another. But love is a beautiful adventure that is taking us on different paths right now. The pair also denied that they split because of any betrayals or loss of love. Adding, quote, there are no secrets nor salacious events at the root of our decision. Just two best friends realizing it's time to take some space and help each other live the most joyous, fulfilled lives as possible. As of now, both parties have moved on with other people, but neither of them have been married again. Fans are hoping there's a reconciliation in the future. And at number six, Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth. Sometimes I forget this couple is no longer together because of how long they were an item. These two started dating when they were both pretty young, after meeting on the set of The Last Song in 2009. Then they got engaged in 2012, when Cyrus was 19 and Hemsworth was 22. But only a year later, the engagement was called off, and they split up for three years before finding their way back to each other. This time, it was the real deal, and they made their love official by getting married in December of 2018. But once again, it sadly did not last, and they split by the next summer. At that point, they had been together for over 10 years. The two finalized their divorce in January of 2020. Since they split, it seems like Miley's completely changed as a person and has really come into her own. So it'd be really surprising if they got back together. It would kind of seem like Miley was regressing to her past self. To be honest, I'm not sure I even want them together again. Halfway at number 5, Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart Somehow we thought these two were the perfect couple, even though Kristen looked in pain most of the time that she was around Rob. It wasn't his fault, she just wasn't able to be her true self until she got out of that relationship. They were together for about 3 years from 2009 to 2012, and seemed to rekindle their relationship for a bit in 2013 before breaking up again. Their split was at the center of drama when it was exposed that Kristen cheated on Rob with director Rupert Sanders, who was married with kids at the time. These two seemed genuinely happy now without each other. Rob's in a long-term relationship with Suki Waterhouse, and Kristen just got engaged to Dylan Meyer. In at number 4, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams This couple proves the old saying that hate and love are so close in the brain, one can turn to the other pretty fast. When these two first met on the set of The Notebook, they hated each other. At one point, Gosling wanted McAdams recast with a new actor, allegedly. But I guess after reading all their heartfelt lines and doing the makeout scenes, they ended up turning from hate to love. The couple started dating in 2005 and stayed together for two years, but in the end, they split. At some point, they won Best Kiss at the MTV Awards, and wow, is it steamy. It's been close to a decade since they got together, so it's safe to say they've moved on since then. But it would be pretty awesome to see them back together again. In at number 3, Lisa Bonet and Lenny Kravitz 
Now that Lisa announces she is divorcing from longtime husband Jason Momoa, a reunion between this iconic couple could be on the horizon. The actor and musician got married in 1987, and their divorce was finalized in 1993. This stylish couple was very amicable when they split, and did everything possible to create a healthy environment for their daughter, Zoe Kravitz. Kravitz even told People their relationship is now more like brother and sister, and he's buddies with Bonet's ex-husband, Jason Momoa, as well. It kind of seems like they're one big, happy family in a way. Lisa also shares two kids with Momoa. But after news of their separation started, some people have been thinking a reconciliation between Lisa and Lenny is not out of the question. In at number two, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. Even though Brad dumped Jen for what he thought was better, decades later there is a much better chance that Jen and Brad will reconcile than he and Angelina. It's been 15 years since the two actors divorced, they've both married other people in the meantime, and hopes for reconciliation still haven't stopped. It just might be the longest mourned celebrity relationship of all time. Pitt and Aniston first met in 1994 via a blind date set up by their managers. They instantly hit it off, dated for years before getting married in 2004, but only a year after they got married it was over by 2005. In their joint divorce statement, they claim that tabloid fodder was not the reason for their split. But since he and Angelina got together right after, it's pretty hard to deny. They finalized their divorce in October of 2005. Aniston remarried with Justin Thoreau in August of 2015 before their divorce in 2017. Both people are currently single and were seen getting cozy at an award show in 2021, so there is hope for the future. And finally at number one, Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens. Anyone who was a preteen when High School Musical came out is probably still rooting for this couple. These two were love interests in the hit movie series that premiered on Disney, and their spark on screen translated over to real life. This couple officially started dating in 2006, and they stayed together for five years. While this couple didn't make things official until 2006, they were reportedly getting super close in 2005. The first few years was smooth sailing, but by 2007, breakup rumors started swirling around the couple, which they denied. After this, engagement rumors then started to surface, but Vanessa admitted she felt too young to get married. At this point, both parties started to get doubts. They both felt too young to be tied down. Zach says he remembers his friends teased him for not playing the field in the height of his high school musical days. Unfortunately, by 2010, the couple decided to go their separate ways. There's been rumors that they considered getting back together multiple times, but nothing has ever come from it. Starting off this countdown, we have Gigi Hadid and Zayn Malik. The history between these two is wild. They have been dating on and off for years. They started dating late 2015. They called it quits in March of 2018. Two months later, they were spotted together again. In January of 2019, they announced that they broke up again. Zayn said that he had a lot of issues that Gigi just couldn't help him get through. A year later, it was announced that they were back together and then they gave birth to their first child, Kai. A little while later, there was an incident between Zayn and Gigi's mom, Yolanda. She claims that he grabbed and shoved her into a dresser during a fight. She also claims that he yelled a number of profanities at her. She also said that Malik reportedly would yell at Gigi a number of times over the phone when he wasn't in the US. One thing he said on the phone to her was, I quote, strap on some effing balls and defend your partner against your effing mother in my house. Obviously, due to all this and more, Yolanda does not want Zayn in Gigi's life, let alone near Kai. So this whole thing is the definition of messy. In our ninth spot, we have Grimes and Elon Musk. After being together for three years, the pair called it quits in September of 2021. Apparently, this happened due to the fact that he was always traveling for his work at SpaceX and Tesla, whereas Grimes mainly works in LA. But apparently, for quite some time after their separation, Grimes and their baby were still living with Elon Musk. The two maintained that they were semi-separated but remained on good terms which I don't think was always the case. Later, Grimes revealed that the two had gotten into an argument over their baby's name and fought days before she went into labor. Then in July, Musk tweeted out saying that pronouns suck and Grimes did not like this at all. She replied and I quote, I love you, but please turn off your phone and give me a dial. She continued on saying, I cannot support hate. Please stop this. I know this isn't your heart. She quickly deleted this reply and Musk unfollowed her the next day. Moving on to number eight, we have Addison Rae and Bryce Hall. TikTok stars Addison Rae and Bryce Hall called it quits in March 2021. The pair began their romance in November of 2020. It wasn't long for the two to call it quits after Bryce Hall was suspected of cheating on Addison, although Bryce denied any of the claims. But this eventually led to the pair unfollowing each other on Instagram. Despite Bryce claiming that all the cheating allegations were false, 
He said that it drastically impacted their relationship. He said, and I quote, I'll be honest, I broke up with her because I was completely stressed out with it all. I paid so much in lawyer fees to get all this bullshit off my plate. And even though Addison found a way to trust him again, it still put a lot of strain on their relationship. In our seventh spot, we have Tana Mojo and Mod Sun. Seems like Tana Mojo broke girl code after going after her ex girlfriend's ex-boyfriend Mod Sun. It's confusing, I know. She dated Bella Thorne, who dated Mod Sun previously, and apparently they were in like a polyamorous relationship. I don't really know, it's confusing. In 2019, Bella took to Twitter, accusing Tana of breaking girl code. She never revealed what she did, but it seems like she was upset about Tana and Mod Sun dating. They kind of had a thing for a while, but stayed apart to avoid drama. Then Tana went on tour with Mod Sun just before the pandemic started. Shortly after, the two went to LA and quarantined together. Anyways, in August of 2021, in a podcast, Tana revealed why the pair broke up. And it wasn't because of the Bella drama. It was because of Tana's OnlyFans. In the podcast, she said, and I quote, the literal, actual, actual reason we broke up, we were doing perfectly fine as a couple, literally perfectly fine. And then I wanted to start an OnlyFans and he wasn't, he was not down for it. That was sincerely the reason. I am not shaming him for this because I think obviously, like let's say I were to talk to him about it in an hour, let's say we sit down, I think he would have seen what it is and what it's become and become more accepting. But he was very much kind of, you're gonna become a star. And I was like, you've dated literal stars. So yikes, that's all I gotta say to that one, yikes. In our sixth spot today, we have Aaron Carter and Melanie Martin. This is another very rocky relationship. The pair started dating in January of 2020 and it's been messy ever since. A week after welcoming their first child together, Aaron announced that they had split. In a tweet, he said, due to personal reasons, Melanie Martin and I have decided to go our separate ways. He continued on saying, and I quote, there has been a very big lie and my sister communicating with my ex fiance ruined everything considering she knew what Angel tried to do to me in court. Thanks Angel, you ruined my family. So apparently Melanie was in talks with his estranged twin sister, Angel Carter, and he was not too happy about that. In another tweet, he said, and I quote, I've never felt more devastated and betrayed and lied to in my entire life. This is such a horrible situation considering Prince doesn't deserve any of this. And now it's my job to just be a single father and that's what's gonna happen. Not only that, but Carter posted on Instagram saying that he was trapped inside of his bedroom because Melanie wouldn't let him leave his house. In fact, because of everything that was going down, Child Protective Services actually showed up at their house. And of course, Carter had to go live on Instagram when they did. But then apparently a week later, the pair were back together. So I honestly don't know anymore. Are they still together? Are they broken up again? I don't know. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. Since 2016, Khloe and Tristan have been dating on and off. On June 21st of 2021, the pair called it off again. Now, many people would agree that their relationship isn't the best. And that's because Tristan has cheated on Khloe a number of times. Khloe even said that she has felt betrayed by him, but still continues to go back to him. And just this year, it was revealed that Tristan is the father to a third child. He was dating Chloe at the time that his son was conceived. Like, come on, Chloe, you deserve so much better. In our fourth spot, we have John Mulaney and Anna Marie Tendler. After six years of marriage together, the couple announced on May 10th that they have split up. John's spokesperson said, and I quote, John will not have any further comment as he continues to focus on his recovery and getting back to work. Meanwhile, Anna said, and I quote, I am heartbroken that John has decided to end our marriage. I wish him support and success as he continues his recovery. So it was John who decided to file for divorce. Later, it was revealed that the pair was going through a rough patch while also experiencing a reconcilable differences in their marriage. Just months later, John got together with Olivia Munn. Fans were shocked at how fast he moved on. And only months into their new relationship, they announced that they were expecting their first child. Which was shocking, not only due to the fact how fast it all happened, but also because Mulaney has also made it clear that he didn't want kids. Moving on to number three, we have Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez. 
J-Lo and A-Rod first met in 1999 when Alex was still playing baseball. Then again at a Yankees game in 2005, but at the time they were both married to other people. Eventually though, things fell into place and the pair began dating in 2017. Two years later, in 2019, they got engaged. But in March of 2021, the pair split. According to JLo's friend that talked about their split, she said, and I quote, JLo insisted on it. There are too many issues that are unresolved. She has been pretty miserable and didn't think it was in her best interest to stay with Alex. Then, only months later, rumors swirled about JLo and Ben Affleck getting back together. And now it's official. They are. Hashtag Benifer for life. In our second spot, we have Shia LaBeouf and Margaret Qualley. This pair started dating after starring in a music video together, Love Me Like You Hate Me. However, in January of 2021, the pair split. After Shia got into legal troubles with his ex-girlfriend, FKA Twigs, they split just weeks after his ex filed a lawsuit against him. She accused him of sexual battery, assault, and emotional distress. Shia denied all the allegations, but Margaret did not want to be with a man accused of such. And in our number one spot today, we have Kim and Kanye. Of course, they had to make it to number one on today's list because everything going on between them is wild. On January 5th, 2021, news broke that Kim and Kanye were ending their marriage, and on February 19th, 2021, Kim officially filed for divorce. The two have four children together, and that right now is causing a lot of drama. Apparently, Kim was keeping the kids away from Kanye. Kim wants full custody, but obviously Kanye wants joint custody. Kim says that Kanye is unstable. Kanye says that Kim's unstable. It's just really messy. And now it's even worse when you throw Pete Davidson into the mix. That's just adding more fuel to the fire. On June 10th, 2021, during the Keeping Up with the Kardashians season finale, Kim said, and I quote, after turning 40 this year, I realized, no, I don't want a husband that lives in a completely different state. To me, I thought, oh my God, that's when we're getting along the best. But then that is sad to me and that's not what I want. Yikes, that's a hard thing to admit. And I feel like their situation is going to just keep getting messier before it gets better. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>